You're watching live with me, Tim Wilcox. Welcome back. As we've been hearing, China has launched a nationwide campaign to increase the vaccination rate among older people. There's particular concern about the over 80s. One in four in this age group hasn't received even a single shot yet. At a press conference, uh, elderly people were urged to come forward and get vaccinated. China continues to abide by its zero COVID strategy in the face of angry protests over the weekend over the lockdowns. Well, the low rate of vaccination among older people means that relaxing this policy could lead to a high number of severe illnesses and deaths. Uh, let's get more on this with uh, Kerry Allen, the BBC's China media analyst. Uh, it's interesting because this zero COVID policy right at the outset of the pandemic, when it uh, began in Wuhan and there were no vaccinations, worked well. But since then, the rest of the world has moved forward with vaccinations. China doesn't ap appear to have done. Why is that? Yeah, and this has really fed into people's frustration at the moment, especially when they're watching the World Cup and they're seeing people get back to normal. It isn't clear, because if you'd have asked me what was the situation this time last year, um, government officials were saying that China had reached the threshold for herd immunity. So 80% of the population had had at least two vaccines and people were expecting in early 2022 that life would be back to normal but obviously this isn't the case there's been more talk of boosters and yeah especially amongst the elderly population so this has been the narrative now yeah and China of course focused on the younger generation when they did the, they started with the vaccinations rather than the elderly that's the opposite of what a lot of West, uh, western um, countries were doing what about the vaccine rate um, production line i mean it wasn't as uh, effective as some of the mrna uh, vaccines produced elsewhere but are they still producing all these vaccines absolutely yes it's still very much the case in china that local vaccines are prioritized so sinopharm sinovac cancino these are companies that people are told these are the vaccines you should be getting and there's a media message that that those should be uh, those are accessible within the country and also there's a message particularly amongst the elderly and vulnerable people now that there is an inhaler vaccine that's available in major cities like Beijing and Shanghai so less invasive than a needle for example something that they're saying well these are great you can use these if you don't want to get a needle vaccination uh, the booster program though isn't doing as well is it it's not, no, no. Um, the elderly are increasingly, I mean, I've been seeing in recent weeks just a constant message telling the elderly, get vaccinated, get vaccinated. But Chinese people thought, well, we've done this. Like, we've had at least two. And, uh, and yeah, the elderly are particularly resistant to getting more vaccines. When you look at the effectiveness though, of this zero COVID policy, I mean, the economic consequences uh, in terms of unemployment, uh, I think footfall in terms of cinemas and things down 60, 70 percent, the uh, metro lines as well. So the economic consequences are harsh, but it does seem to have worked thus far in terms of deaths, doesn't it? I think one of the latest figures I saw was that 2,400 deaths per million in the UK from COVID, three per million in China. Yeah, the, the total death figure has been given as just over 5,000 since the beginning of the pandemic. So China has prioritised people not getting sick, eradicating the virus with a zero COVID strategy. That has been the line. But there have been reports of people then, you know, in quarantine centres, so many people going into quarantine centres, problems with neglect, not being able to get food. Uh, and also because there's so much effort going into the medical system to control lockdowns, there's, there's you know, not enough medical staff to help out in other areas. So people with acute illnesses, um, especially the elderly, pregnant people, there have been reports that these, you know, COVID is no longer the, possibly the killer. Like this is something that medical services also need to focus on. Okay. Kerry, uh, with that update, thank you very much indeed.